Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, I went over the definition of a subspace and I explained the three rules that a subspace must obey in order for it to actually be considered a subspace. And I also showed that the span of any set of n dimensional vectors in Rn is a subset of Rn. And the reason why I wanted to point this information out is because we are largely interested in the span of the vectors that form matrices. For example, if we have a matrix A, and let's get a little creative here, let's say that the matrix is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have this matrix, then we can define subspaces that are associated with this matrix by taking the span of the vectors that form the columns of this matrix. So if we call these V1, V2, V3, and V4, and we take the span of this vector set, then this forms a subspace that we refer to the column space of A. And similarly, we can take the span of the rows and if we were to take the span of these rows, what we get is the row space of A. So the span of the vectors that form matrices creates subspaces that we are interested in, and we will be studying those later on in the series. So that's the reason why I wanted to point out that the span of any given vector set in Rn is a subset of Rn. So in this particular example, the column space of A is a subset of R3 because the columns, the vectors that form the columns are three-dimensional, therefore they exist in R3. And similarly, the row space of A is made up of four-dimensional vectors, so we can say that the row space is a subspace of R4. So anyway, in this video, I want to consider a specific example and determine whether or not it is a subspace or not. So let's define a set that we will call W, and let's say it is equal to the set of all vectors of the form a plus 2b, a minus b, and 3b, where a and b are real numbers. So this space w, or this set w, contains all the vectors of this form for any a and b, and we want to determine whether or not w is a subset of r3, where r3 is the vector space that this vector lives in because it is three-dimensional. So recall from the previous video, in order to determine whether or not something is a subspace, it needs to satisfy the three rules that we talked about. So the first one is that it must contain the origin. So if we let A equals B, which all equals zero, so if we set A and B equal to zero, what we get is the vector zero plus two times zero, and zero minus zero, and three times zero, which comes out to the zero vector, zero, zero, zero. So we know that w contains the zero vector. So we can say that this vector is an element of w for a and b equal to zero. So the second thing we want to check is whether or not this is closed under addition. So let's create an arbitrary vector w1 and let's let it equal a1 plus 2b1, a1 minus b1, and 3b1. And let's pick another arbitrary vector in w in our subspace, and let's let it equal a2 plus 2b2, a2 minus b2, and 3b2. So recall that in order to check whether or not this is closed under addition, we add them together and see if the sum is also in the subspace. So if we add these two vectors together, w1 plus w2, this comes out to be a1 plus a2, plus 2 times b1 plus b2. And then in the next entry we get a1 plus a2 minus b1 plus b2. And then we get in the last row 3 times b1 plus b2. So in order to check whether or not this sum is an element of w, all we have to do is see if this vector right here fits the form defined in our set. And upon inspection we can say, hey, Let's let a equal to a1 plus 
a2, and let's let b equal b1 plus b2. So if we were to replace, if we were to substitute in these expressions into our sum, what we would get is the vector a plus 2b, a minus b, and 3b, which matches the form of our set. So we know that the sum of these two vectors is an element of w, therefore we can conclude that this is indeed closed under addition. So the last thing that we need to check is whether or not this is closed under scalar multiplication. So let's consider our w1 again, so our, an arbitrary vector w1, and let's multiply it by a scalar c. So c w1 is equal to the vector a1c plus 2b1c, a1c minus b1c, and 3b1c. So with similar reasoning, we can say, hey, let's let a equal to a1c in this case, and let's let b equal b1c in this case. And again, the reason why we can do this is because A and B are constants, they're real number constants. And since C is also a constant, A1 times C is also a constant. So these are both still elements of the real number. And that's why we can make this substitution in this, right here and uh, up here. So anyway, when we make the substitution, what we get is this becomes the vector A plus 2B, A minus B, and 3B which again matches our form up here, and therefore we can conclude that this is in fact an element of our subspace W, and therefore it is closed under scalar multiplication. So since this subspace, as defined by the set, satisfies these three criteria, the three rules that every subspace must obey, since it satisfies those, we could conclude that W is in fact a subspace of R3.